Yeah, so this is Nikon's hidden treasure. No one's talking about it. Mm. And I think it's one of the best lenses I've ever used. Apart from us, because we're now talking about it. Now we're talking about it and we're sending it out to air to the world. New lens day. Look at this beautiful, beautiful so sculpted. You're carrying on you with your regression back to F mount, are you? <laughs> yeah, well look at this though. And I borrowed your 35 and I started using it and I just wasn't happy with it. Is that why I'm going to get it back? <laughs> Pretty much. Okay. There's just something about it compared to the sharpness of a 24 to 70. Yeah. It can't compete. Because so I loved use the idea of using primes as much as possible, a wide prime for events. That's the only one, really. You got the well, you 24. Got 24 haven't you? you got 24, but isn't, that 20. isn't long enough. Okay. I've looked at the alternative F mounts. You've got the Sigma 35 1.4, mm. you've got the Nikon 1.4, but these are really old lenses now. They're a bit slower focusing, again, really soft. Oh. Then someone on the forum suggested. Have you tried the 28 1.4? And I was like, what is that? Exactly, I was like, there's a 28 1.4. <laughs> and I was like, I was quickly on the internet, I was like, oh my God. There's a 28 1.4. That's yeah. hardly ever, anyone has ever talked about. Right. And, but the reviews I've seen were amazing. Like, but I don't always re believe reviews, do no. you online? Because people love what they love, but. Yeah. The reviews. Is it an old? Has it been out a long time? Or? Well, that's the other thing. It's a 2017. Wow. Now. So it's two years before, well, a yeah. year and a bit before mirrorless. So one of the last yeah. F-mount lenses, right. which we've never heard of. Yeah. There wasn't many reviews. There's hardly anything about it online. And then you look at the price on Nikon's site. It's £2,000 for this lens to buy brand new. And we all know you don't do that. I don't do that. <laughs> and so I found on a site in the UK, uh, a used one for a thousand pounds. So I thought, well, and here it is. Good nick. It looks looks good to me. Okay. And so, yeah, this is where I've led to. So let the battle commence then. Well, yeah. Well, Against, well, for instance, my old 35 then that I've just haven't well, seen for a few months. Old but newer than this. Yeah, true, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Only by yeah, a year yeah, or yeah. two. Yeah. Well, the, is it a fair comparison? Because this is a two thousand pound lens and that's a Less than 2,000. Less 2,000 pounds <laughs> lens. Probably five, I don't know. But that's a lot newer, yeah. newer technology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is older technology. Yeah. But this it's... is a premium, and the size-wise, they're yeah. very similar. Yeah, this but is. Of course, you've got to add the. Smaller in diameter. In FTZ, yeah, 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 of yeah. course. But it's a good, it's a nice weight to it as well. Yeah. So it'd be really fascinating to see, because I love 1.4 lenses, because yeah. it's the same 1.4e as my 105 1.4e, right. which, which I love. So will this stand up to a test against new technology? We'll soon find out. We'll find out. Let's go. Let's go. So I did lots of tests comparing it to the 35 and I soon realized there was something wrong with it. And after a test, I did this field curvature test and it showed it was really far off. So then I sent the lens back. The issue was that they couldn't repair it anytime soon. I waited three months and there was no update on the repair so I got a refund then bought a new one for £1,600 and you can see this is the new test with the field curvature which is almost straight which is how it's supposed to be. Sharpness test so I'm comparing it directly to the 35. Can you tell which one is which yet? The right one. Even at this distance, you can see there's a difference. The right hand one is certainly softer on the details. If you look at this edges of the nine here, certainly softer on the right hand side. The details are right in the center on the bullseye. On the left hand side, you can even see there's little scratches. Yep, that's right. The 35 is on the right at 1.8 compared to the 28 at 1.4. So at 1.4, it's already sharper than the 35 at 1.8. Although on the edges, on the left-hand side here, the 1.8 is sharper. You can start to see the edges of the two here. Moving to 1.8 on both of them, the 28, the edges of the frame now have cleaned up, which is to be expected. I'd actually say it's a bit sharper now than the 35 at 1.8. In the centre, there's a clear difference. The 28 is a lot sharper now. Incredibly sharper. 
2.8 on the 35 increases the sharpness dramatically and now so it's difficult to find differences when the 28 is at 1.8 and the 35 is at 2.8 and that's I've never really seen that before however the edges on the 35 are a lot sharper now you can see the start to see the grain in the wood and on the 28 it's a bit hazy you see the holes here are quite clearly defined on the 35 so what happens when we move the 28 to 2.8 you can see the 28 at 2.8 is even more sharper now. If you're looking at the edges of the bullseye, it's, you can see, start to see the fraying of the wood. And on the 35, it's still a bit hazy around the edges there. And the edges have cleaned up a bit on the 28 now, but it's still not as good as the edges on the 35. Shooting at f4, is about the same center sharpness as the 28 at 2.8 which again is quite remarkable that shooting at 2.8 is equivalent of an f4 on this 35 but moving to f4 on the 28 it cleans up a lot but still not as good as the f4 on the edges of the 35 i would say center sharpness the 28 has improved again you can see the little scratches on the bullseye here and it's not so noticeable on the 35. Again, not much in it now at F4 in the centre. On Photoshop there's a feature where you can find edges which actually inevitably shows the sharpness of the photo. 28 has a lot of darker shades in it which means that's where it's in sharpness and focus. There's a lot more darker areas which show sharpness. Testing depth of field and the look of an image here. But the colour difference, look at the skin tones of my face. You can see it's a lot warmer. There's a lot more colour tones, even in the trees here. And in this one, it isn't so much. Let's look at the depth of field of the shed if I did. Yeah, so you can see the lines of the shed here in the door. And on the 28, they're very faint you wouldn't really know they were there. Medium length shot, the depth of field will be more shallow on both now. 50% view, sorry about this. You can see the colour tones a lot more nicer on the 28 and the background. You can see the lines and the edges starting to come through on the 1.4, it isn't. So, close up. So you can see the depth of field, the 1.4 is smoother, 35 is more edges. You can see some lines coming through. So I thought I'd show you some video here and you can hear the clicking of the 28 and 35 is almost silent but the 28 is really fast if not noisy with the clicking and I'm also clicking there as well for some reason. The 24 to 70 2.8 S is the sharpest lens I've ever used. So let's compare it to the 28. They are very, very similar. I would say the 24 to 70 is a tiny bit sharper in the finer details. The edge sharpness on the 24 to 70 is supreme compared to most lenses, and it's no exception here. Okay, this is to show the difference in focal lengths between 24, 28, and 35. And you may think at first there isn't much difference between those, but when you're in a confined area, every millimetre helps. It seems they both have this issue, which I'm surprised with the 35 because it's a new lens. You can see the green fringing and purple a bit on the white there. And it's the same for the 28. So these are real world examples now. When I travel to Paris, and I'm really happy with the results. Again, this is at 1.4, and it shows how you can make the portrait stand out from the background, if that's what you want to do. Although when you're in such a nice background, I don't know why you would, really. So here, I've shot at 3.2 ISO 80, 400 for a second. As you can see, it's really sharp. This was more daytime, and I shot at 2.8. And you can see the clarity here is really nice. 
This is an interesting one. So it was almost night time. It's a dark alleyway and shot at 1.4 and it's really nicely sharp there. Again, night time with the water and this is at 1.4, 80 for a second. And now it's 11,000 ISO. The subject is quite a distance away. Shooting at 1.4, you can still get the depth of field. It's sharp and the depth of field is evidently there. And this was a walking by, I took this really quickly actually. And I quick, I think I focused on this guy here. And you can see at 1.4, the depth of field, even at this distance, they're in focus, but then everything else around them isn't. And this is quite a wide shot here. It shows how good it is. So this is in a restaurant. It's quite dark, but I shot at 2000 ISO, 1.4. And it's beautiful rendition of the background here. And you can see how sharp it is on the eyes there. 1.4. So I wanted to show the difference between shooting at 1.4 to 2.8. And you can see the 2.8 version is noisy and has some noise there, but hardly any. So wedding photography, I found it really useful shooting at 1.8 and below to get the ISO down to get nice clean images. And this is a good example. So this is 3,200 at 1.8. And when you need it, I will step down to 5.6 because I wanted this in focus as well as the reflection. I'm really happy with that image. You can see it's sharp there and sharp in the mirror. Perfect. 1,250 shutter speed because so I wanted to get the veil flowing in the wind nice and frozen. And look at that, it's perfect. And I shot at 1.4 for this shot because I did want to isolate the bride and the bridesmaids from the building and the foliage because it was quite complex. Uh, wardrobe, makeup, lighting. Yeah, what did you think of results? Well, first of all, where are we? Where are we? Yeah. Come on, okay. come on, where are we? We are back in Daffodil Park. Where there's only, it's a little bit early for it, I think, though. Yeah, so what did you think of the results? There's quite some strong differences there, I yeah. think. Against my poor little cheap 35 1.8. I think it's definitely a quality lens, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's, it's exactly what I wanted. It's a lot stronger in every respect, I think. Yeah. So the sharpness is always a step ahead. And that's incredible that 1.8 is equivalent to 2.8 on that. In terms of the sharpness, yeah. yeah. And that enables you to crop in really far. And that's what I wanted to do, shooting with primes on events. So I can shoot quite wide, 28, crop in really far. Yeah. And I've got a usable picture. Where on the 35 at 1.8, I couldn't really do that. Poor it was a bit boy. too soft, unfortunately. Oh. I think that's to do with the quality of glass in here. Yeah. But obviously, it's a much more expensive lens. So the transitions from sharpness to after depth, the depth of field, yeah. it's always going to be a bit nice. And I've used a 51.2 yeah. and a 28.1.4. Yeah. And I doubt you'll be able to tell the difference between so them. So flog your 51.2 then. <laughs> to use this. So your f mark collection is growing. Yeah. There's yeah. a theme with the f mark. Yes. And there's a theme with the Z. So yeah, I'm bringing back the f mounts. This is my third f mount lens that I bought since Blimey. getting the Z lenses. Sold them all, now you're buying into them. Does it get your stamp of approval? And if you didn't have any of them, which one would you oh, get? I see, I've got my Leica Q2 with a 28mm f1.7, which right. is fantastic. Since I bought that, I'm not sort of really so bothered about the 24, the mm. 35. I think if I didn't have that, I do like the Z lenses being beautifully, they just work fantastically. You don't mm. have to mess around with the FTZ. Yeah. I mean, I can appreciate it's a really good lens. Yeah. I'm not going to ever rush out and get one. No, 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 okay. Uh, but for you, it sounds like you're sold on it. Yeah, I think this is Nikon's hidden treasure. I think it's remarkable, the quality, and it enables me to do things that that lens can't do. Yeah. I mean, all um, these lenses and bodies, you can quit, yeah, you professional quit, they're yeah. all great. Yeah. I mean, you could say we're kind of nitpicking. We with are. All the, but yeah, it's quickly become one of my favorite lenses yeah, yeah. to use. Yeah. So I can use yeah, it for right. events, I can take it for travel, street. Yeah. It is really useful. So it's a great sort of focal length when mm. you put it on something like the Z7 with all the megapixels so you can crop in to get effectively 35, 50 mil, yeah. probably a bit more than that yeah, yeah. without losing the quality. Yeah, oh, we need to split screen. So, shing, shing. One side is the 28 and one side is the 35. What you've got to do, guess. Guess which one it is. Guess which one it is. <laughs> Obviously we can't sell from here. So the 35 is there and the 28 is there. 
Fantastic. I can see that for me because that's so much bigger and older looking <laughs> yeah. than my little 35. Uh, so there you go. I hope you found this video entertaining and informative. Yes. Will you be considering the 28 or any other F-mount lenses in comparison? 